Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of electroculture gardening, an ancient technique that's making a modern comeback. Imagine plants growing faster, stronger, and more abundantly, simply by harnessing the power of electricity and electromagnetic fields. Sounds like science fiction? Well, that's exactly what we're exploring today. Electroculture gardening is the practice of using electrical currents or electromagnetic fields to stimulate plant growth and improve crop yields. While it might sound ultra-modern, the roots of this practice stretch back over a century. From copper wires strategically placed in garden beds to more complex electrical setups, electroculture enthusiasts believe these methods can revolutionize how we grow our food. In this comprehensive guide, we've divided our exploration into four key parts. First, we'll journey through electroculture's rich history, from its 1800s origins to modern developments, highlighting pioneering scientists and fundamental principles. Second, we'll examine current research, looking at scientific studies, expert opinions, and real-world applications worldwide. Third, We'll explore electroculture's future potential in addressing food security and becoming part of sustainable agriculture, along with emerging technologies and challenges. Finally, we'll conduct our own experiment with lettuce plants, comparing a control group against an electroculture-enhanced group over several weeks to document growth differences. And we'll share our setup, methods, and results with you. Whether you're a curious gardener, a sustainability enthusiast, or just someone fascinated by the intersection of nature and technology, this video will provide you with a comprehensive understanding of electroculture gardening, its past, present, and potential future. So stick around, and let's explore this electrifying approach to growing plants. Part 1. History and Basics Let's dive into the fascinating world of electroculture gardening. But what exactly is it? Simply put, electroculture is the practice of using electricity or electromagnetic fields to help plants grow better. Think of it as giving your plants a gentle electrical boost to help them thrive. The story begins in the late 1800s when a Finnish scientist named Selim Lemström noticed something intriguing. While studying in the Arctic, he observed that plants near the northern lights, Aurora Borealis, seemed to grow faster and stronger. This led him to wonder, could electricity affect plant growth? His pioneering experiments using artificial electrical fields on crops showed promising results, increased growth and better yields. In the early 1900s, a French engineer named Justin Christoflo took these ideas further. He designed simple systems using metal wires and rods to channel natural atmospheric electricity into the soil. Farmers who tried his methods reported harvesting larger vegetables and healthier plants. These early successes sparked interest across Europe and America. So how does electroculture work? The basic idea is surprisingly simple. Plants naturally respond to electrical signals in their environment. By introducing gentle electrical currents or magnetic fields to plants or soil, we may influence several processes. Enhanced seed germination. Improved nutrient absorption stronger root development, faster overall growth. The traditional methods were beautifully simple too. Early practitioners would place copper wires in spiral patterns around plants, install metal rods pointing toward the sky to capture atmospheric electricity, create simple circuits using different metals to generate mild currents, position magnets near growing areas. The results reported by these early adopters were often impressive. Tales of giant vegetables, frost-resistant plants, and harvests that came weeks earlier than expected. While some claims might have been exaggerated, there was enough evidence to keep the practice alive through generations of gardeners. Part 2. Current Situation and Expert Studies After decades of remaining in the shadows, electroculture is experiencing a revival in scientific circles. Several research institutions are now taking a fresh look at this old practice with modern tools and methodologies. Leading the charge is China, 
where institutions like the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences have conducted extensive field trials. Their research published in recent years shows promising results. Up to 20 to 30 percent increases in yield for certain crops like wheat and rice when subjected to specific electromagnetic treatments. At Zhejiang University, researchers found that applying mild electrical currents to soil increased tomato yields by 17 percent while reducing fertilizer requirements. In India, the Indian Agricultural Research Institute has been exploring electroculture's potential for small-scale farmers. Their studies indicate that certain pulse crops respond particularly well to electrocultural techniques, with researchers documenting not just better yields, but improved drought resistance, an important finding in regions facing water scarcity. Russian agricultural institutes have focused on cold climate applications, finding that electroculture methods can extend growing seasons in harsh environments by stimulating faster seed germination and early growth potentially game-changing for northern farming regions. Modern science is helping explain what our ancestors observed empirically. The mechanisms appear to work on multiple levels. Electrical fields can increase the mobility of nutrients in soil, making them more accessible to plant roots. Mild electrical stimulation seems to enhance the activity of beneficial soil microbes, particularly nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Plant cell membranes become more permeable under certain electrical conditions, improving water and nutrient uptake. Enzyme activity within plants may be optimized by specific electrical frequencies. Despite these findings, mainstream agricultural science remains cautious. Critics point to inconsistent results across different soil types and plant varieties. There's also concern about standardization. What works for one crop in one climate might not transfer to others. Several companies are moving forward regardless. In the Netherlands, a firm called Soil Tech Solutions has developed commercial electrode systems for greenhouse operations, reporting energy savings, and reduced fertilizer use among their customers. In Japan, Plantron has created specialized equipment for rice farmers that purportedly increases yields by 15% while reducing pesticide requirements. What's particularly exciting is that modern electroculture techniques align with sustainable agriculture goals, potentially reducing chemical inputs while improving yields. As climate change pressures mount, these technologies might offer part of the solution for resilient food systems. Part 3. The Future of Electroculture As we look toward the horizon, electroculture technology is evolving rapidly, blending ancient wisdom with cutting-edge innovation. The future holds exciting possibilities that could transform how we grow our food. Emerging technologies are making electroculture more precise and accessible. Modern systems now feature solar-powered electrodes, automated field monitors, and smartphone-controlled units that adjust electrical parameters based on soil conditions and weather patterns. Companies like Agritech Solutions are developing scalable systems with wireless monitoring capabilities, allowing farmers to track performance remotely while optimizing electricity delivery. The integration with sustainable farming practices looks particularly promising. Researchers at Cornell University have found that certain electroculture methods can reduce the need for chemical fertilizers by up to 20% while maintaining yields. This aligns perfectly with organic farming's goal of minimizing external inputs. In California, some vineyards are already experimenting with electrocultural techniques to reduce water usage, a critical consideration in drought-prone regions. Energy sustainability is becoming central to new electroculture designs. Most modern systems are low power by nature, making them ideal candidates for solar powering. A team at Michigan State University has developed electrodes powered entirely by small solar panels creating a self-sustaining system that requires no external electricity. This makes the technology viable even in remote areas without reliable power infrastructure. The scaling potential spans from windowsill herbs to industrial agriculture. Home gardening kits are already appearing on crowdfunding platforms, offering simple setups for urban gardeners. Meanwhile, large-scale implementations are being tested in countries like India and China, where field trials cover hundreds of acres. The modular nature of the technology means it can be adapted for virtually any growing environment, from vertical urban farms 
to traditional rural fields. Regulatory frameworks are still developing. While no formal certification standards exist specifically for electroculture, organizations like the Organic Materials Review Institute, OMRI, are beginning to evaluate these technologies for potential inclusion in organic certification programs. The EU's Agricultural Innovation Initiative is funding research to establish safety parameters and best practices, suggesting regulatory clarity may be on the horizon. The economic impact could be substantial if widely adopted. A 2023 market analysis by AgTech Global suggested that electroculture could develop into a $2.8 billion market by 2030 if current adoption trends continue. The potential to increase yields while reducing input costs presents a compelling economic case, particularly in regions facing climate volatility or resource constraints. Part 4. Our experiment and your suggestion. Now comes the exciting part. To put electroculture to the test, we're planning a hands-on experiment right here in our garden. We'll set up two identical growing beds, one using standard methods and one with basic electroculture techniques. For our main crop, we've chosen lettuce since it grows quickly, responds visibly to environmental changes, and is easy to measure. Our electroculture setup will use copper wire arranged in spiral patterns connected to a small battery-powered unit generating a mild 1.5 to 3 volt electrical field. We'll carefully track growth measurements, leaf development, color, maturity time, final yield, and even conduct a taste test to see if there are flavor differences. We'll document the entire process and share a complete video showing our setup, weekly progress, and final results. This way, you can see for yourself whether electroculture actually makes a difference in plant growth and health. If you have suggestions for other crops we should test or specific aspects of electroculture you're curious about, let us know in the comments. Subscribe to our channel to catch the upcoming experiment video and learn if this fascinating gardening method truly lives up to its promises. We'll reveal everything, the setup, the progress, and most importantly, the final results. Keep growing with smart farming inside.